Hey guys, it's Weston with Outworld, and for the past six months or so, I've been turning this 2019 Toyota 4Runner into the ultimate off-grid remote work vehicle, and I think I'm about 95% there. So it's time I show you from top to bottom a full walk around of everything that's going on. Um, I'm gonna go through step-by-step step everything that's been done to the vehicle and a couple things that I still have left on the plate. Come check it out. So before we dive into the individual mods, I want to go over the whole vehicle. This thing was actually coated in uh, PPF, which is paint protection film. I went with Ceramic Pro's Kavacha, and it actually got ceramic coating on top of that. Um, a lot of people are going to give me flack for that because it doesn't do anything against rock and the harder things on the trails, but the reality is this thing sees a lot of time on the road and also just tighter trails uh, where you've got small brush and things like that. This absolutely helps with that. And if you guys know me, I'm a big fan of keeping the paint clean. So that was an easy decision for me. Uh, from top to bottom, the whole entire car was completely coated with the, with the PPF, um, including the headlights and then um, the ceramic coating. The Ceramic Pro 9H actually went onto the wheels. Um, all of the powder coat, and again, that's kind of excessive, but since everything was going on, the ceramic brings out like a nice dark black. Even on the ABS for the, the TJM snorkel and everything, it keeps it black, it keeps the scratches away. Um, it's an easy choice for me, keeping the vehicle looking good and keeping the scratches off. With the front bumper, we went with the CBI off-road pad uh, steel front with the full hoop protection. Uh, within that, I've got the full amber LED bar from OZ USA. And then for the fogs, I went with the Baja Design Squadron R Sport. These things are ridiculously bright. I almost don't even need any other accessory lighting on here. Uh, for the winch, I went with Warren's VR Evo 10S. It's one of their newest ones, equipped with um, synthetic rope out of the box. It's got a Bluetooth remote uh, for the controller. It does still have the manual plug-in if you want to take the, uh, the, the housing off in the engine bay, uh, but if not, the Bluetooth works just fine. Um, and then I went with the Epic Fairlead and the Sidewinder attachment instead. This is definitely one of my favorite upgrades. These are the Alpha Rex Nova Series headlights. It's an LED headlight, um, and honestly, coming from the HID realm for the longest time on the third gen, I was kind of hesitant about LED technology, but this was one of the biggest immediate transformations on the truck. Uh, the fifth gen forerunners are just terrible out of the box with stock headlighting. Uh, first person that rode in the car when I got the vehicle told me to turn my headlights on. I had to tell them that they were already on. Um, and I think everybody's been spoiled by the, the HID retrofits in the past. These things are ridiculous. They have the same technology as the Audis and uh, BMWs of the world with their LED technology. Um, they've been super good. They've got nice DRLs uh, just for the added aesthetics, but these things rock. There's no warm up time for the HIDs. I could not be happier with them. Now for the snorkel, I went with the TJM. Um, it's specifically made for the fifth gen 4Runner. And it's tough because TJM, Australian company, they don't have any fifth gen 4Runners out there. So the US team that's actually based in San Diego with me, their engineer uh, plotted this whole front quarter panel and designed it himself and sent it off to Australia uh, for them to make specifically for the US market. What I really like about it is that it's super low profile. I really don't like these uh, necks extending all the way across the fender. I like it low profile. I like it to disappear as soon as it can. This is the epitome of low profile. Um, I've put maybe 2,000 miles on it since I've had the install. Um, the air is cleaner. Um, I know that the filter itself, even after a couple runs in the desert, has been great. A lot of people with snorkels are going to assume water crossings. Of course, that's a very obvious benefit, but the benefit is cleaner air because otherwise you're pulling in air from your wheel well right here, which is always kicking up dust. And even though you usually have a plastic shield, there's always dust that's getting past it. This has proven over time and time again over my last couple builds that it does keep the air box cleaner. I try to stay away from water whenever possible. I hate mud. I like keeping all the internals clean whenever I can, but this is good insurance if I do need it. As for the engine bay, I've kept it pretty simple, but obviously the king in this thing is the Magnuson Supercharger. Uh, provides 30% increase in horsepower, 28% increase in torque out of the gate. Uh, these are bench tested up to 15 PSI, but um, stock they're running at 5 PSI. So in the future, there may be room for improvement, but for right now, it pulls it great. Uh, the, stock, the truck right now is still running the stock 373 gears, so it's definitely under geared. This thing still pulls it really well, but eventually I'm gonna get up to the 456 or 488, and this is just gonna be a perfect complement altogether, this system. Another great thing about the supercharger is that it comes with its own independent cooling system. 
Um, you put the coolant in right here. It has its own intercooler that's built in uh, in front of the radiator. Uh, that way it's helping cool the supercharger while the factory system uh, is working by itself. So having those things separate and still working together keeps this thing cool on those higher temp and higher altitude climbs. I'm pretty confident that this engine is going to stay uh, the temperature range that I want to keep it. As for electronics, I've kept it really simple and S-Pod has really helped me with that. So for all the lighting and eventually the air compressor, which is one thing I need to touch on, all of it is going to be powered by the Bantam X by S-Pod. It's their newest uh, switch management system. I used to have their Source Pro, and this is kind of the next offering. It's a super low profile design. The things I love about these is that for every lighting system that you have, you just clip everything minus the power on the ground. And that's all you run to this thing. The source board does the rest of it. Um, I've used it on all of the builds before this with massive success. And so there's no other option in my mind as to what was gonna power and control all the lighting in here. As for the lights that are going to the S-Pod, let's go through one by one with actually what's going into this thing. So with the roof rack, I have the four front facing LED lights. For the rear, I have the LED chase bar. And typically for a chase bar, you're gonna tap into your tail lights so they mimic what your tail lights are doing. But instead, I've opted to route each color individually to the S-Pod so I can control each at will. Um, not only can I turn on the amber, the red, the white whenever I want, but I can also add an effect to it, whether it's flashing, strobing. So times when you're in the desert, there's a bunch of dust kicking up. You have a lot of combinations and you have the control over each of the colors, which I really dig. Uh, the one thing that's missing in here, which already has a button assigned to it, is the ARV air compressor. Unfortunately, it would be mounted right here, and the uh, reservoir for the supercharger intercooler is here instead. So I'm still coming up with a solution that'll most likely put the compressor over on that side. But until then, that's how this whole thing is going to play out. The rest of the lighting that I have powered by the S-Pod is the front LED bar right here, uh, eight rock lights that are around the vehicle, and then also the ditch lights that are mounted in the uh, CBI rear bumper that we'll go over shortly. As far as the suspension wheels and tires, one thing that's remained consistent over the last few years and a couple builds uh, for good reason has been the General Grabber X3. It's one of my favorite tires of all time. They look great, they run great, they balance well, they're super quiet for a mud terrain and how aggressive this tread is. I uh, really don't have any other choice in my mind. They've been really awesome for the last couple years. For the wheels, I went with the Method Racing MR701. Their bead grip technology kind of gives me the best of both worlds. It gives a nice flush finish without the faux beadlock look, but the bead grip technology behind this rim right here has allowed people to run this at zero PSI without popping the beads. So a lot of the benefits of bead grip and a nice clean finish, which I really like. The front coilovers I went with were the Toy Tech Boss Aluma Series. Um, I'm gonna put these up with the icons and the kings of the world. I've ran these across the Western US um, on rock, sand, everything, high speed, low speed, on the road. And honestly, where I live in San Diego, the potholes there are probably worse than some trails that I run. Um, through everything, these things have just been so great on every terrain. They've just managed it so peacefully. It really feels like a luxury car inside, and I've tried to maintain that, and the suspension is definitely helping out with that. As far as the cab, it's pretty simple, and I wanted to keep it that way. I wanted it to be capable, but not over the top. I still wanted it to feel clean and kind of luxurious inside. Um, there's just two skosh mounts that are uh, adhesive mounted to the top of the center console. Uh, these things have magnet plates on the back that come with it. This is my main cell phone, obviously for cell purposes. And then I had an old cell phone that I basically repurposed for GPS. Um, I've used Backcountry Navigator for a couple years, um, liked it decently. I just switched over to Onyx Off-Road, uh, downloaded the maps ahead of time. And uh, the short time I've worked with it so far, it seems like a pretty decent upgrade over what I've been used to. And the only other thing different in this cab is gonna be the S-Pod that I have flush mounted below the um, AC unit. And honestly, there's a little cubby hole in there that I never even figured out what to use for. So in my mind, this was perfect. It kind of complements the rest of the unit. Almost looks factory, which is what I was going for. So as for the remote working capabilities, uh, it's, it's gonna be powered by the Goal Zero. We'll get it into that in a little bit, but uh, this is kind of the remote workstation that I have right now. This is just a cheapo Coleman camp table that I got off of Amazon. I think it's 30 bucks. Uh, obviously working off the MacBook Pro. And then I also got off of Amazon a secondary monitor and anybody that's went to dual monitors before in their past, you could just never get away from them. So whether it's spreadsheet or analytics, um, it really helps me just uh, continue the same workflow and same capabilities that I had back at the home office. So the tailgate area and the rear bumper has a lot of the fun stuff. So let's go through piece by piece and what is making this all come together. 
Uh, first, I finally put these in from the third gen. These are the dual ARB drawers. I have one of the big ones, uh, one of the small ones. The small one houses my Goal Zero uh, solar panel. We'll get into that in a second. And then the right drawer, the bigger one, houses a recovery gear, uh, some of the fuel uh, tools and stuff like that. Both of these drawers have slide outs. So for the left side on the smaller drawer, we've got the ARB 63 quart fridge. Um, this thing, as well as the bottom pulling out, this thing comes out as well, makes it easier for you to grab. Um, one big difference is, this is kind of unorthodox, but you're supposed to hard mount these into the tailgate for good reason, um, so they don't move around. The problem is, is I don't want these drawers in all the time. Sometimes I like laying the seats flat and I love the cargo space that you just can't get with these drawers in. So um, I do have a three quarter inch plywood piece in here that I've cut to fit and it gets it over the hump that connects the tailgate to the rear seats. Um, everything is kind of loose in here. It does shift maybe an inch or so while driving. I, I did a little bit of off-roading coming into this camp spot and it did move, but nothing too crazy. Eventually I'm gonna bolt these drawers to the plywood and then I'm gonna make a tie-down system where they use the stock tie-downs here in the corner on, on the four points to kind of keep everything nice and level. But I do want the ability to pull this whole system out and get the stock um, tailgate back where everything lays down flat. This is definitely one of my favorite parts of this new build. So on the third gen, I had a dual battery set up, but for all of its positives, I wanted legit power capability, but also the ability to move it outside of the vehicle and not be tied in with the vehicle itself. The Goal Zero answers all of that. So for the last few years, I've had a Goal Zero Yeti 400 lithium. It's a pretty decent power unit. It's good for my laptop, uh, tablet, cell phone charging. It's actually really capable just in that size. This is the Yeti 1400. This thing is ridiculous. It's an absolute beast. And the best part about it is I can charge it while I drive. And so with the link kit that's installed right here, it goes straight to the battery and charges it as I drive. Before I left here, I had it plugged into my house wall and it was charging at about 50 watts. It took almost a full day. While I'm driving, it pulls almost 600 watts. This thing charges super quick while I'm driving. I can't believe it. The best part is, is with the solar panel I have right here, I can plug that in as an input and the solar input will go straight to the battery and tender it while I'm parked here. I feel like it provides all the capability that I've had with the dual battery system. It also just gives me all these power outlets, USB and everything without me having to install them separately, which is what I had to do with the dual battery system. So this powers everything I need. My home office set up. I mean, I could even run an Xbox and TV on this thing. The potential is ridiculous. As for routing the power, I wanted to make that clean and simple as well. So what I did is on the power outlet right here, right next to the actual power outlet, I drilled out the cigarette lighter and I installed an O-ring gasket and I routed from the engine bay down through uh, the wiring panels on the side. I routed the cable all the way there. And if you see it, it looks almost like it came that way from the factory. You pull it out, plug it into the back of the link kit, charges while you drive. When you're done, you want to take it with you and you don't want cables all around put that right back in the o-ring uh, it was a perfect spot for me and now i've got full remote capability and the coolest thing is is i'm 50 yards from the current river right now what if i want to work directly on the current so now i can just lug this thing with me and plug up down there i couldn't do that with the dual battery so this just gives me a lot of versatility and the same capability even more than i have with the dual battery system i don't think i'll ever go back as far as the camp kitchen i tried to keep that pretty simple too uh, right behind the camera is a tempo tusk i'm sure you guys have all seen that Love that thing, it's totally versatile, um, easy to clean, easy to store. Um, the two other things that I've added are this MSR, which packs down super compact. Um, I can use that in combination just with um, anything I need for pots and pans and stuff like that without having to pull that Tembo out if I'm not doing like a full meal. Uh, the other thing is the jet boil, obviously, is uh, just for power and water. Um, I got these things from Planetary Designs, but this keeps uh, anything from trail mix. I've got coffee grounds in here right now, it keeps it fresh. I actually picked up their tumbler too. This thing is super rad. It's got a locking system, unlike my, my Yeti somewhere. Uh, I dropped it a couple times. It's windy out here, you can hear it. It's all safe and secure. That's basically it as far as the kitchen setup is concerned. So if you saw the last video, you know that the whole armor, front rear bumper, slider, skid plates are all CBI. The rear bumper is the their plate steel uh, dual swing out. Uh, both camp tables on each side. Uh, the right side has the full size spare. The left side houses the two roto packs and the high lift jack. Uh, the only customizations I made on this were six three quarter inch holes spaced evenly across the bumper. 
if you saw the third gen that I did, it's the same exact aesthetic. Um, no real value there, just besides a, a nice added touch. I uh, really think it kind of brings the, the rear end together. Um, the only other thing is the amber ditch lights in the corner. That's a stock option for them, and that's routed uh, to the S pod that I showed you earlier. Before we get into the rooftop tent, which is badass, I want to explain how it's all mounted. I obviously have the Gobi Stealth Rack and the ladder. Favorite rack, obviously, if you haven't seen my last couple builds, it's super versatile, low profile, and I think it complements any vehicle better than any rack on the market as far as aesthetics, and it's totally capable. The Gobi has removable crossbars, and so when I got this tent, I knew I needed a little bit of spacing between the rack itself and the tent so I could mount the awning because it just needs maybe a, a half inch for the awning mounts to clear on the rack and, and fit the tent as well. So what I did is I created three quarter inch uh, two square tubing spacers that fit underneath the tent and above the removable crossbars. And what I'm gonna do is basically permanently mount the crossbars to the tent. I'm gonna get a second set of removable crossbars that'll be for like bike rack and, and other normal things. That way, when I take on and off the tent, I only have to worry about the four bolts that hold the removable crossbars on. I've done it in the past. It takes 30 seconds to get this thing on and off. It's the best thing I could ask for. So the spacing is super tight, which is what I really dig. So I needed enough space to get the accessories on there to not contact the rear chase bar, but I didn't want it sitting too far up from the rack. I wanted it low profile, but I also wanted everything to fit. This is the perfect combination of everything. I'm super happy with how it turned out. As for the awning, I'm using the 2000 by 2500 mil. Um, it fits perfectly the width of the fifth gen Gubby Rack. And the bigger size is the 2500, but honestly, we can fit five people and have drinking games all night on the 2000. Um, for how it fits on the vehicle and just how flush everything looks, I think it's the right choice for this. So this is the rooftop tent. This is Auto Home's latest rooftop tent. It's called the Airtop 360. Um, they have an Airtop that has a little bit less windows, but I wanted something that had a lot of airflow, a lot of viewability. Uh, this has both. You might be asking who Auto Home is. They're the OG rooftop tent makers. They started making rooftop tents in 1958. They're handmade in Italy. Uh, we've had the Columbus variant, uh, the Magellina on the other builds. Uh, the quality is just on point. Uh, the only difference between this and the Magellina, the Magellina actually has a crank up system where the whole thing pops up with a crank. These are air shock activated, so there's two latches on the front and one latch on the rear. You just unlatch those, pop them up, it comes up in 10 seconds. Um, it also has shock locks so you can lock them down just in case the wind is super severe, the shocks will stay put. Um, the best thing about this is not only is the airflow good, it keeps the insects out, if you see the walk around of the vehicle, it looks like this thing is completely closed, but on the inside, you can see everything. So I don't know what the technology is behind it. You have to look up the fancy buzzwords, uh, but it, it's almost like privacy glass, but in uh, screen form. Uh, this thing is super comfortable. It's got a nice thick mattress. Uh, this is my first night sleeping it last night, and I was super happy. Um, it's got a couple utility pockets on each side. As for accessories, it's pretty simple. I just bring the Yeti 400 lithium up here. It powers the cell phone for charging. Uh, my tablet, I've got some movies on there. Also have Super Nintendo loaded on there. So I've been going through the last couple times I've been camping and uh, reliving my childhood, playing Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. I'm, I don't think I ever beat them. So going through when I'm done with the outdoors for the day and all my work is finished. I'm up here trying to crank that out. And that about does it. Uh, thanks for checking out everything. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message, comment below. Um, otherwise, there are a few things that I still need to add to this, the uh, air compressor that I mentioned. I also wanna upgrade the uh, head unit, which is kinda outdated, and there's a couple little surprises that I have waiting in the garage that I need to install, and I'll update those in a future video, but hope you enjoyed.